So let's now have a look at the output for our multiple linear regression. Uh, if we go to the start, we have a descriptives table that's of no particular use. It gives us the, the n. Uh, then we're interested in the correlation table. The first line lists the dependent variable and its correlations with the dependent variables. Sorry, the dependent variable with the independent variables. So the correlation is positive, uh, around about 0.2 with certainty, and there's a small positive correlation with severity and compliance. Neither of these relationships are statistically significant. And here's the correlation between the predictors, which is small, but it is statistically significant. So we have correlate positively correlated predictors with small correlations uh, with the dependent variable. Next, we have uh, a table that indicates that this is the first model, and that in this model, severity and certainty were entered with the dependent variable compliance. Uh, the R is 0.2 and the R squared is 0.04 and this means that approximately 4% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained. However, when we want to generalise to the population, we can only be certain that uh, approximately R squared is approximately 0 0.01 adjusted R squared and therefore when we generalize from this um, analysis we can only assume that the predictors explain about 1% of the variance in compliant behavior. The next table explains um, whether or not this result could have occurred by chance and what we see here is that this is a non-significant result. The next table provides regression coefficients. Uh, this is the constant, so it's the starting value of uh, compliant behavior if certainty and severity are zero. And then these are the unstandardized regression coefficients, which we would use if we're building a regression equation. But normally I would come in first and look at the standardized beta values because that tells us which are the strongest predictors. So certainty is a much stronger predictor than severity and they're both positive predictors. However, neither of them are statistically significant because these values are not below 0.05. Now the other tables that we get are the residual statistics and here we are interested in the maximum Mahalanobis distance which in this case is 6.8 and we're going to check that against the critical value for chi-squared which you can find on page 186 in the left hand column of Allen and Bennett. Uh, and the degrees of freedom will be equal to the number of predictors. So we would have chi-squared for two degrees of freedom and the critical value is around about 13.8 and our maximum value is obviously less than that. Therefore, we can conclude no multivariate outliers.